When our writer told us that the year 1997 was over a quarter of a century ago, we laughed in her face, right in her stupid, stupid face. If that was really the case, then that would make all of us here at Team Triple Jump old, and we're definitely not old. Well, James is, but the rest of us are still hip and down with the kids. Now, if you just hang on a moment whilst I take my <clears throat> cod liver oil supplement. Ah, delicious. Indeed, 1997 may be way in the past, but that doesn't stop us from remembering the year fondly, and when we say remembering the year, what we actually mean is remembering its great video games. For today's best of list, we're casting our minds all the way back to 1997, but before we do, let us reacquaint you all with the rules. A game can be considered amongst the best of its respective year if it received a minimum of seven professional reviews and was released in at least one territory in the 12-month period in question. We also don't include ports, re-releases, or collections as you'll find those in the list pertaining to their original release year. All clear? Excellent. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best games of 1997. Number 10. Blast Core N64 90% it seems like 1997 was a particularly good year for British game studio Rare, as they've managed to secure not one, but two spots on this list. We'll get to the other one in a short while, of course, but for now, let's turn our attention to the first brilliant title the developer released in 1997, Blast Core for the Nintendo 64. In this action puzzler, players used vehicles to clear the path of a runaway nuclear missile carrier, and although things start out quite straightforward, the puzzles quickly ramp up in difficulty. Blast Core was a massive hit with both players and and critics. In particular, reviewers lauded the originality of the game and praised the developers for taking a risk with the premise that few other studios at the time would have. The game also got a lot of love from critics for its graphics, and although they might not look much by today's standards, at the time they were an absolute marvel. Ultimately though, the reason that people fell in love with Blast Core was because it's really fun to drive big vehicles and it's even more fun to plow them into buildings. Number 9. Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2 PC 91% If asked to name a fantastic Star Wars video game, we imagine most folks would go with Knights of the Old Republic, and whilst that game is great, we think it's high time that Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2 got some recognition for once. Don't be shy, Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. Enjoy your moment in the sun. Developed and published by LucasArts and released for Microsoft Windows in October 1997, Dark Forces 2 was the second installment in the Star Wars Jedi Knight series and the follow-up to 1995's Star Wars Dark Forces. The story focuses on returning protagonist Karl Katan and his quest to confront his father's killers and make it to the Valley of the Jedi before they can. The first-person shooter received acclaim from pretty much everyone that got the opportunity to play it. Critics were impressed with the game's balance of action-based gameplay and puzzles as well as its graphics, controls, and the use of John Williams' original score. What's even better is that despite being over 25 years old, you can still buy and play it. Considering that it costs about as much as a fancy coffee, we highly recommend you go and show this retro gem some love. Love. Number 8. Colony Wars PlayStation 91% there are some out there who think that branching out from Earth and inhabiting other planets would be fun and exciting, but if the PlayStation space combat sim Colony Wars is to be believed, it's likely to cause nothing but trouble. Colony Wars was developed and published by Psygnosis, the studio perhaps best known for the Lemmings franchise, and sent players off into outer space to take part in intergalactic war. Throughout the game, players had to undertake a number of combat missions using the starfighters of the League of Free Worlds and could obtain a number of different endings depending on the actions they took and the battles they won or lost. Upon its release on Halloween 1997, Colony Wars was showered with praise by critics, with 9 out of 12 publications bestowing it with review scores in the 90s and 4 giving the game a perfect 100. There were several reasons for Colony Wars' critical success, but the main ones were its mission branching system, the selection of weapons and spacecraft that were on offer, and the fact that it was able to make players feel like they were really part of an epic space battle. Number 7. Myth The Fallen Lords PC. 91%. Though they're perhaps most famous for creating the Halo series, Washington-based studio Bungie was dipping its toes in the pool of video game greatness long before Master Chief was even a twinkle in Microsoft's eye. Developed by Bungie and published by them in North America and Eidos Interactive here in Europe, Myth The Fallen Lords was a title of the real-time tactics persuasion and tells the story of the battle between the forces of light and dark for the control of an unnamed realm. Unlike other RTT or RTS video games, Myth didn't task the player with resource management based building or troop requirement and instead focus squarely on combat. Although the initial release of Myth the Fallen Lords had some flaws, including an insane level of difficulty, the version 1.1 update dealt
dealt with them all, and critics went on to praise the game for everything from its graphics and camera to its level design and multiplayer mode. The game was so popular that it spawned a sequel and a prequel, and even has a fan community that continues to support it to this very day, even though its official servers have been offline for years. Number 6. Soul Blade PlayStation 91.46% before we get into this one, we should probably clarify that Soul Blade and Soul Edge are basically the same thing. Soul Edge was released in arcades in 1995 before making its way to PlayStation and releasing in Japan in 1996. However, when the PlayStation version was released in the West in 1997, it was renamed Soul Blade in order to avoid a trademark dispute with Edge Games, an American developer that's more famous for suing people than it is for actually making video games. Everything nice and clear? Good. Then we shall proceed. Soul Blade was the first installment in the Soul Calibur series and centered around the titular sword, a weapon that's rumored to give the wielder unlimited power, and the fighters who have come to either claim or destroy it. According to critics, Soul Blade was everything that a good fighting game should be. Its graphics were great, the level design was exciting, and it had a decent roster of interesting characters for players to choose from. It wasn't the absolute best fighting game ever made, but it was a great deal of fun and earned itself review scores of 80 out of 100 or higher from every publication that reviewed it. Good work, Soul Edge. God, sorry, I mean, Soul Blade, please don't sue me. Number 5. Parappa the Rapper, PlayStation 92%. Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Dance Dance Revolution. What do all of these games have in common? Well, aside from the fact that they're all rhythm titles, it's that they all owe much of their success to Parappa the Rapper. The game follows the adventures of Parappa, a dog who must rap his way through a number of different scenarios in order to win the affection of Sunny, a flower-like girl on whom he has a crush. I tell you, if I had a quid for every time I've had to rap to impress a love interest, I wouldn't have any money. Gameplay-wise, players simply needed to follow the on-screen prompts, carefully timing their button presses in order to successfully complete the rap. The You Rappin' meter showed players how well they were doing, ranging from awful to cool, and in order to pass a stage, players would need to attain at least the second best ranking. Parappa the Rapper received universal acclaim, with critics lauding its inventive premise, the paper-like graphics, and all of the irresistibly catchy tunes. The game went on to earn a number of different awards, including the 1998 Interactive Achievement Awards accolade for outstanding achievement in interactive design. Number 4. Sid Meier's Gettysburg, PC. 92%. This isn't the first time that Sid Meier has made an appearance in one of our best of lists, and considering that he seems incapable of making a bad video game, we're fairly confident that we'll see him again at some point in the future. For his 1997 outing, the exclamation point enthusiast drew inspiration from the American Civil War. Sid Meier's Gettysburg gave players the opportunity to play as either the Confederacy, Boo, or the Union, yay, and they were tasked with controlling troops during the Battle of Gettysburg. Players were able to enjoy either a single scenario or a whole bunch of interconnected ones, and although the real historical battle was won by the Union, either side could emerge victorious in the video game. Gettysburg was a triumphant debut for Studio Firaxis Games, who have gone on to develop every Civilization title since Civ 3, as well as the remake of Sid Meier's Pirate and XCOM Enemy Unknown. Critics were particularly impressed at how well the game was able to balance engrossing real-time strategy gameplay with simple and intuitive controls, making it a must-play for anyone with even a passing interest in historical battles, be they RTS veterans or complete newbies. Number 3. Final Fantasy VII – PlayStation 92.35% by 1997, the Final Fantasy franchise was already a decade old, and what better way to celebrate turning 10 than by giving players an absolute banger of a game. Released in January 1997 in Japan, September 1997 in the USA, and November 1997 everywhere else, Final Fantasy VII introduced the world to Cloud Strife, a mercenary who claims to be formerly of Soldier First Class, an elite Shinra fighting unit. Cloud joins the eco-terrorist organization Avalanche, and together with several more of the group's members sets out to stop Mega corporation Shinra from draining the planet of its life essence. Huge businesses exploiting the world's resources for their own gain? Pfft, that wouldn't happen. Not only did Final Fantasy VII sell almost 14 million copies worldwide, boosting sales of the PlayStation in the process, but it also received universal critical acclaim for its gameplay, story, graphics, and pretty much everything else it had to offer. It also won multiple Game of the Year awards along with several other accolades, including one Hottest Video Game Babe award for Tifa Lockhart. Great. And is now considered to be one of the greatest and most influential games of all time. Now, if we could just get the next part of the remake, that'd be lovely. Number 2. Castlevania Symphony of the Night PlayStation 
93.03%. Cripes, if a fantastic game like Castlevania Symphony of the Night was only the second best game of 1997, then whatever's at number one must be an absolute belter. Spoiler alert. It really is, but we'll get to that in a moment. Taking place four years after the events of Rondo of Blood, Symphony of the Night stars Alucard, the Dampier son of Dracula who players first met in 1992's Castlevania III Dracula's Curse. After Dracula's Castle reappears following the disappearance of Richter Belmont, Alucard awakens from his slumber in order to destroy his dear papa's dwelling once and for all. Although Symphony of the Night is now a classic of the Metroidvania genre and is often cited as one of the greatest games of all time, it didn't initially sell very very well, and it was only once word of mouth got around that it became popular. It may not have been the commercial hit that Konami was hoping for, but the game went down with critics like an ice-cold beer after a long day at work. In particular, Symphony of the Night was praised for its story, gameplay, and 2D graphics, which is somewhat surprising considering that, by 1997, 3D had really started to take off. We're still not letting Alucard go, though. What a ridiculous name to give yourself. Do better. Number 1. GoldenEye 007 N64 96%. Well, 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 if it isn't rare at it again with the great video games. It isn't often that a movie tie-in video game is ever acceptable, let alone decent, so simply by virtue of it not being terrible, GoldenEye 007 stood out from the pack. However, GoldenEye 007 wasn't just not terrible, it was really bloody good. Released shortly before GoldenEye sequel Tomorrow Never Dies, GoldenEye 007 put players in the shoes of secret agent James Bond and gave them the opportunity to do spy things. Across several levels, players must stop the evildoers from firing the GoldenEye satellite weapon at Earth. GoldenEye 007 wasn't just a great game, it was a landmark first-person shooter, pioneering gameplay elements such as stealth-based missions and multiplayer deathmatch, as well as proving that home consoles were absolutely capable of doing the FPS genre justice. The game went on to become the third best-selling Nintendo 64 game of all time, the best-selling N64 title that wasn't developed by Nintendo themselves, and the third best-reviewed game on the 64. 64-bit console. So well done to you, GoldenEye 007. Not just for being a smashing game, but for paving the way for many of the FPS titles we know and love today. 